of course. Um, so yeah, I've been singing for all my life. I started around three years old and then I wanted to be a singer at a young age and kind of stuck with it. Um, so I've been singing for a long time uh, and now I do it professionally and I've been really getting into teaching about the voice because I really enjoy kind of the mechanics of it, of vocal pedagogy and how it works. Um, the voice is so weird and so strange, but there's so many cool aspects about it that differs from person to person because one, not everyone has the same voice, kind of like a snowflake, you know, every voice is very different how it's used and hi, Alex. Um, hi. Hey, every voice is different. Uh, we'll go around like and get everybody's name and, um, and pronouns in a minute. Um, yeah, so every voice is different. Um, so how you take care of it is very different from each person and how you use it. Also, the voice is such a personal thing. Like when you go to a voice lesson and stuff like that, it's, I mean, there's so many times I've cried in voice lessons, you know, because it's something that's kind of like, it's a gateway to your soul and to your spirit. Um, and that's why I, I love it so much. And I, I take it very seriously when I'm teaching, you know, especially to encourage people who um, may never sing to sing. Um, because I think that's the most important. Everyone believes like, you know, oh, I can't sing or, oh, my voice is not made for that. And it's like, you just, we're just never taught as people how to use our voice. You know, we're never taught. We're just thinking it's for singers and it's, it's not. It's, um, everyone should know just the basic things about what their voice can do because what it also helps is your speaking voice and not like in that weird um, colonial make you talk more proper kind of way like fuck that shit I'm not about it but it's also that you have more strength in your voice because a lot of times people don't really like their voices you know like so many people that I've spoken to like oh you know you put a microphone to them and they hear <sighs> their voice for the first time they're like I hate my I hate my um, speaking voice you know like I don't like it and um, I want I want to help combat that. So we're gonna talk a lot about, um, and I really want to hear from y'all about uh, what your experience is, whether it's like I have sung before, or I don't really sing, or um, you know, just like they're different levels, and that's also okay. So we'll just go from there. So I want to go around and. Um, because I do see some faces that I do know, but then there are people that I don't know, and I would love to, you know, have everyone, like, introduce themselves. Um, please give your, uh, your name, um, pronouns that you would like to use, and just your, you know, what is your experience with your voice? Whether it's like you sing, or you talk, or, you know, it's like, I don't know what my voice can do, but I've always been interested. Anything is open. So uh, please feel free. You just have to, everyone has to talk one at a time. So if you're not talking, I would just ask for you to mute yourselves. Um, and uh, who would like to begin? Because I'm done talking. <laughs> I can go. Yay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm on my phone, so I can't really see like other people like that. So I was just like, let me just go. Um, but yeah, <laughs> my name's Alex. I use they, them pronouns. Um, I would say, yeah, my experience with voice stuff has been like me singing um, for myself, by myself. Um, I tend to be pretty um, secretive about my music and I'm trying to get out of that. Um, I've taken voice lessons with B, um our homie yeah. um you know and i just want to keep taking more and um yeah i don't know what else to say so. <laughs> happy to be here <laughs> hey hi alex amazing all right um who wants to go next just tell me tell me a little about, bit about yourself hey i'm hop um, hi Came through, so I don't know exactly what the setup was, but um, she heard California. Amazing. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about your voice, since this is like how to liberate your voice. 
you, do you sing at all? Do you want to sing? What, tell me your relationship with your voice. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I sing not unlike anyone, really. It just mm -hmm. comes up <laughs> and out. Um, I, I do, like, I make, like, screamo meditations, kind of. Um, cool. Not in, like, not screamo in the traditional sense, I guess. But, yeah, I love singing. I actually do it a lot for psychic protection. So. Um, wow, that's amazing. Thank you. That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> that's so cool. Well, thank you for joining. Oh, wow, that's great. Um, who would like to go next? Right? Scream meditation. <laughs> like, yeah. Who wants to go? Hey, I'll go. Um, <laughs> Hey, uh, I'm Yelen. I use they them pronouns. Um, and uh, my relationship to voice. Um, yeah, I, I sing. I, I feel like I don't have, like, not perhaps the right traditional way of singing, but I feel like I hear different voices that I try to channel. Sometimes different voices come to me that I don't even know, and I can channel them and then I'm like oh I don't know how to you know do that or who that was mm -hmm. um but yeah I feel like when I um get into that zone where I'm able to connect with my voice um I don't know it's I, I don't know how to like describe it or that's okay. uh, yeah Thanks for being here, Lynn. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone? Well, everyone has to go, so I'm just saying, like, you know. Hello. I'll go. Oh. You gonna, are you going to talk, Sage? My name is Sage. I use she, her. I am. Is it working? Hello? Yes, yes. Now it is. Now it is. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I All of my devices are old and broken. And I was not prepared for this situation that we are in, so I apologize. Um, my name is Age. I use she, her pronouns. I'm so grateful to you, Alithia, for being down to share again with us. I love singing with you. I love hearing your voice. You are an inspiration. Um, so I'm really excited to do that with you. If I'm looking down and typing, it's just because people are confused about what's happening with Zoom. And so I'm, I'm coordinating, but I'm so sorry. But I'll be screaming and singing. Screamo, I'm about that. I want to learn more hop together. Yeah, Screamo is so interesting for me. So I, I am too really curious about it. But yes, and I love all of you. So thank you. Hey, thanks again. All right, who else wants to go? Eddie, you want to go? I'm calling on you. <laughs> sure. So my name is Eddie, he, him pronouns. Um, not a singer. I just sing in the shower. Got a lot of shampoo Grammys for that. Um, most of my voice stuff is really through advocacy. Um, yelling and screaming and projecting in that sense. Um, but I've taken one singing class with Alithia in exchange for a gym session. I beat her up in the gym and she beat me up in the vocal lesson just from the diaphragm. Pow! So here we are again. <laughs> I'm way nicer than that. <laughs> no, don't, shh, don't tell them. <laughs> well, thanks for being here, Eddie. I appreciate you. Who else? Who else? I'll go. Hey. Um, first of all, thank you so much. Also, you sound great. Even <laughs> from this Zoom thing, I, you're the the best voice I've heard on Zoom right now. <laughs> um, I, hi everyone, I'm Mon, um, they don't pronoun. Um, I, I just remembered I was in a choir if, when I was a kid, but I, since I moved to the States, I think I just have a lot of level trauma. I haven't really sang mm -hmm. more ever. Yeah. Um, but I do like to listen to music a lot. Um, and I also really hated my voice when I'm 
like res I have to do some like podcasts and speaking things, and it's just always really weird to hear my own voice. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to learn from you and liberate my voice. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah, I know. When you get amplified, all of a sudden you're like, is that my voice? And yeah, but that's okay. It's totally okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, you can go next. Um, who is who is this? Who oh, I did, I couldn't see. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'll go after you. Sorry. Oh, well, okay, thank you. Hey, um, I'm Karen, and I go by they, them pronouns. Um, and my experience with singing is that, like, I as well have been singing since I was a child, like, like three or before. Um, and my, like, whole life plan was to be a singer, and I went to high school for singing. And then at the end of it, I was like, F this. I never want to sing again. Mm -hmm. I, know. Um, I know that feeling. Um, and so I went to art school and I'm like finishing my uh, painting like degree. Um, and so I've done total 360, but I'm just trying to get back into singing um, so I can just, I don't know, sing my songs better. And I have a different voice than what I had before. And I haven't had any training at all since then. Mm. Yeah, our voices change. I mean, of course, like our bodies, our voices change a lot with time and also wear and tear depending on um, what you do with it. Uh, so it does change um, often. Um, but that's okay. I feel like, you know, maturity in a voice, it's always good. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. So I'm glad that you're here. Yay. All right, who's next? Okay, hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Sahar. Um, I am really excited to be here in your class and I just really wanted to thank you and to thank Bufu for holding this space and for everybody for like coming together and stuff because it's really nice to be in a space where we can think about our voices and singing, um, especially around like what's happening with um, things like the economy and society and all these things and to, to come back to the voice and the thing that Eddie said about activism and how that's really at the core of that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, so my mom always sang and um, she sings like old Persian um, village songs and revolutionary songs and she sang a lot, a lot in Iran during the revolution mm -hmm. um, and the war and stuff to keep people going. Mm. Um, and when I was younger, I'm old, I'm, I'm like in my thirties, but when I was in my twenties, I was homeless for a few years and, um, I was separated from my mom because I was homeless and I sang a lot. I sang a lot in the street. I sang a lot in the street. I sang off of bridges. I sang off uh, to the water, to the wind. I sang from like, uh, you know, rooftops, um, it was a solitary time where I was surrounded by a lot of people. Mm. Um, and then when I wasn't homeless anymore, I stopped singing and I kind of don't know how to sing anymore. And I used my voice, my speaking voice in my, I went back to art school and, and then in, in my um, video poetry stuff, I use it as, um, as like a way to, to speak, poetry or dialogue or things like that and um I I really want to like get back in touch with that space but it feels like such a such a deep space and there's a tr there's a trauma there but there's also a, a coping there and there's also a, a resistance and a freedom there and um so it feels good to be like in this session now with everything that's going on it seems kind of like interesting I mean then, yeah. the first step you know to like get back to your voice it's kind of like your voice knows what it needs to do what gets in the way is our bodies <laughs> i mean i had a voice teacher tell me once i was having so much trouble and uh, she was just like drop your jaw do you feel the cool air in the back of your throat and i was like yeah she said yeah because your breath will just come in so that your body gets in the way 
And I think that's always stuck with me. It's like, at the end of the day, my voice knows what it needs to do. I just need to honor it, you know? Thank you. Yeah, so nice to meet you. Who's next? I'll go. <laughs> Hi, I'm new here. This is my first time I've ever seeing like anybody in this chat except like one other person, Kenny. Um, my name is Michael. Hi, <laughs> my name is Michael. He pronoun. Um, I've been singing ever since I was four, five years old, mm. and that's been, like ever since then, that's what I knew what I wanted to do. Um. I'm more of a pop singer, but I never had technical training because my mom, she always got moved around from like job to job. So like, I couldn't really train in anything that I wanted to do. Mm. So there was even one point where I stopped singing mm. for like two, three years because my voice started changing and I didn't know what to do with it, like mm. at all. Mm. So now I finally learned my voice and like it went through its change. And like, I like how my voice sounds now, so I'm getting back into it, like harder than ever. So this is going to be like my first real, real, real voice lesson. Amazing. So good. Well, so nice to meet you. I'm glad that you're back and singing and everything. And like and you said it, your voice does change. So, you know, and it'll change over time. Yep. But the technique should always be the same. Yeah. Gotcha. Dope. Who's next? Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, all we're talking about for people who just joined us is um, your name, your pronouns, and just your relationship to your voice. I would just love to hear what everybody is, you know, how they feel about their voice so that I have a better idea of like how to structure all the things that I'll be talking about. So Feel free to just unmute yourself and let me know. Hi. Hi. Mary is a long version. Um, my pronouns are they, them, he, him. And it's nice to meet you. I've never seen any of you ever. So new people. Um, my relationship with my voice has been interesting. Um, I grew up singing. I went to church. Um, I don't re recall a time where I was never singing. I don't recall like that, that passion was born very, very early. Mm -hmm. um, but a little bit after um, going to school and being around other people, I would hear different voices and different things and become inspired by them. But also in a way I compared myself to those voices. And so my relationship with my voice started to complexify and um, deepen in a negative way. And so I rejected it for a long time. Um, it was something that I was like, no, nope, I can't say, don't ask me, we're not doing that. Don't, don't look at me, go, no, we're not doing it. Um, and recently I've been able to reclaim that because yes, I do sing, yes, I do sound good, and yes, this is a part of me. So right now that's where my relationship with my voice stands. Oh, so good. Wait, tell me your name one more time. Oh, I couldn't hear it. Say it one more time. Samaria. Samaria? Am I close? Am I right? Oh, you're good. You're good. This is perfect. Okay, good, good, good. I'm sorry. It was going in and out. So I was like, oh, fuck. Yes. I like that you claimed it. A lot of it is confidence, too. For sure. That's like definitely part of it. You have to be confident in what is coming out of your mouth, you yeah. know? Okay. There's a lot of insecurity in that. So I'm glad that you have that. That'll make my job easy. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Go next. Peace, everybody. Um, Joel, Joelito, they, them. Um, super thankful for you all putting this together. Um, my relationship to my voice, I guess I've been thinking more about it in terms of um, like my writing practice. But um, like during these times, just like thinking a lot about my spirituality in church. Um, and like all of a sudden all these like songs from when I was a kid and in church keep coming back to me like I'll wake up and it's in my in my brain and I'm just like whoa mm. um, so yeah, it makes me nervous like I think I should name that like I literally start shaking thinking about singing for some reason because mm. I'm just like hella intimidated by it. it's not something that I really practice that often mm -hmm. um, but yeah that's kind of like my relationship to my voice I think 
I'm in a place where um, I've been able to dive into my voice more so than ever before in terms of like writing, which has felt really good. Um, and so I'm really excited to think about what that can mean in terms of singing, just because in my writing practice, I've realized um, I'm a poet, just like the different ways that words feel, like depending on like vowels and different things like that. So in thinking about singing, that's something that I think I want to be really mindful about, like how different words feel as I say them mm -hmm. um, or as I sing them. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, to add to it. Yeah, so it's like you taste the words that are coming out of your mouth. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. Because then when you think about that, then if you taste it, I think of like words that have colors. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm synesthetic. So it's like when I when I hear words or say words or like saying, I, I see colors a lot of times. So I associate colors with sounds always. Yeah, it's real weird. That's wonderful. That like me and Kanye West were both synesthetic, but I don't really say his name anymore. So yeah, so we'll, we, won't, we won't go there, you know, no thanks. All right, who's next? I think there are like two people that haven't spoken yet. Hi. I'm probably one. Oh, oh sorry. we have two people. <laughs> We're both like. I'll let you go first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you go first. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Rena. She, her pronouns. I, my relationship to my voice or to singing is what we're. Yeah, to, you know? to your voice, like either one. I did have voice training um, that is specifically Linklater voice training. That was part of when I went to the actor studio. And so Here to I have had a lot of, a lot of unlearning that I've done that surrounded my voice. And growing up, I was made fun of how my voice sounded a lot. And um, yeah, so that, so a lot of unlearning happened from that. And then I also use my voice as an instrument for a lot of the healing work and artistic practice work that I do to create relaxation for people through sound baths. So I, yeah, I think that's my relation to my voice. But then this past week, I've had to talk to a lot of people, which is kind of, you know, had me notice like, oh, I'm, I was yelling in the phone, actually. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. There's a lot of sirens happening, of course, for every, all of us. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's like my relationship to my voice is um, very cognizant of when I'm overusing it, but then I also rely on it a lot and... Yeah, I I would say that I'm I'm in a <laughs> good relationship with it now because at, at times before I really understood the power of it and the way to take care of it and and to feed my voice I didn't I didn't understand like the way that I was suppressing my emotions and mm. uh, repeating habits of you know times where people told me to be quiet or I felt like I needed to talk really fast because I wasn't being listened to. So I've, I feel like I'm like in a good relationship with my voice at this moment. Right. Yeah. yeah, I can hear there's a lot of height in your voice. Like your voice sounds very musical to me. Oh, right. yeah. It does. When you said that a you- A lot of unlearning. <laughs> think later, I was like, oh yeah, okay. I I know. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for coming and being here. Thank you for doing this. I'm excited to, and just being with everybody is so cool. <laughs> wow, this is great. Okay, who's next? That's me. Hi. Hi, y'all. Um, my name is Kenny, um, pronouns he, him. And I feel like my relationship with music is like a little complicated and like singing and whatnot because I didn't find out what I really wanted to do until my junior year of high school, which was like musical theater and I wanted to dance, sing and act and all that stuff. And being a junior in high school was like pretty late for something like that, especially auditioning for colleges. Mm -hmm. So like the next two years, I worked extremely hard. I went to vocal lessons every single week, went to dance classes every single week. And then I still didn't get into my school, but, but. I ended up falling in love with dancing even more than singing. So I kind of like left singing behind in a way. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to like find that voice again and just, I don't know, like, like this whole entire class is about just opening up my voice. 
Yeah. Well, it's so nice to meet you, but also you have time. How old are you? Oh, right now I'm 18, about to be 19 next month. My God. Do you know how many things I went through at 18? Jesus. You have time, my dear. Well, welcome. I feel like you're like right on time. So don't worry about it. Yeah. And also sometimes school can be a sham, but that's a whole nother lesson we could talk about how school is a sham. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I know that right now. I go to Pace University. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's another time for another day um, right and then did i get everyone has everyone spoken i think ebony are you here yeah oh ebony hey i'm here um i just joined so i'm not really sure what their questions were um, well asking um your name your pronouns and your just your relationship to your voice um yeah so uh i my name is Ebony, um, they, them, we, us, he, him pronouns, whichever one, um, and um, I'm not sure, I guess I, I mean, I like my voice, <laughs> um, but I constantly um, feel like my throat chakra is kind of blocked, um, I don't use it as much as I should, mm -hmm. um, but um, I enjoy singing and um, playing an instrument, which is like, um, you have to like know what the notes sound like and like sing with them to know that you're playing them right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my practice, but yeah. Great. All right, well, I think everyone introduced themselves. Um, like again, I'm so thankful to be here. Thank you to Bufu for allowing me to be in this space and to talk about the thing that I love the most, which is singing and I mean, the thing about it is that I've, I too have had a very tumultuous relationship with my voice. Um, also a lot of unlearning, like I went to uh, musical theater, I went to college for musical theater and, you know, still dealing with the trauma from that, uh, especially the whitewashing that does happen for black voices too. You know, a lot of the change, they wanna make you sound a certain way so that you're more approachable, you know, you're pleasingly black, you're pleasing to their ear. And um, I hate that. And I had to really unlearn a lot of that, of that as well. Um, so in this practice, we will focus on some breathing techniques. Um, I would love to do a couple of warm ups and ask a few people to like warm up with me. Um, the only thing is that uh, I do have a, a piano here. Can everyone hear that? Just give me like a thumbs up. Yeah, so um, like I can warm up a little bit and we can just like go through very simple scales. Um, <laughs> I'm not a great piano player, so <laughs> I can give you a maybe about pentatonic and that was about it. Um, so it's just like things that you can do for yourself to kind of warm yourself up, even without a piano. Um, and I think it's always good to warm up your voice just for speaking. Like a lot of us, uh, you know, we're doing so many Zoom calls. I'm on Zoom calls all the time. And at the end of the day, I am incredibly tired. And it's mostly because, you know, if you feel like you're screaming at a screen, like constantly, um, so that's why I did set up a microphone, which has made it a little bit easier and the sound is clearer, but it's just wear and tear. And we're doing it so much more now because of the situation that we're in, you know? Um, so it's just different ways to combat that um, in that scenario. So let me, I'm going to share my screen with you. And um, I have a little bit of a slideshow, so we're going to get kind of technical for a bit. Hope you enjoy. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'm going to try and read the chat as much as possible, but it's also a little far away from me and I have terrible vision. So if I'm like leaning in looking crazy, that's why. All right, let's key. Let's get this party started. Okay. Where am I? All right. So over the summer, where'd it go? Oops. Hold on. Ah, okay, so over the summer, um, Bufu asked me to do something, um, and I called it How to Protect Your Voice in Acts of War, um, when we did the Wi-Fi school, which was really awesome. Uh, yeah, boo, boo, boo. So I kind of want to go through that stuff again, because I think that 
a lot of that stuff is if you know how your voice works, then I feel like you would be more cognizant of how you use it. You know, if you're like, wow, that's all the mechanisms in my voice. It's like, hmm, I'll use it differently, you know, or I'll be just more aware of what's happening. Because a lot of times we don't think about it. It's just something that falls out of our mouths, you know. So I made a little slideshow. Okay. So that's me <laughs> when I was a, a wee baby and I was like all about this whole um, wanting to perform and whatnot. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, you know, very studious. I'm a Virgo. Duh, do you not see this composition notebook? <laughs> yeah, man, I was all about it. I, yeah, I was like in first grade, but, you know, and I wanted to be a singer at a very young age, that and a figure skater. So one stuck. <laughs> Um, all right. So uh, what is the voice? So the voice is what sound is produced from your larynx through the mouth or speech. Um, it's a particular opinion or attitude, of course. Um, and I picked this baby because when we were children or babies, it's probably the best time we've used our voices. And it's all about the breath, right? So if we check out this baby... <laughs> like pure joy oh. but if you hear that height in like the baby's uh, sound <laughs> like that's all breath you know and like from a singing perspective those are pretty high notes you know but that's because when we were babies that's we had the best kind of breath you know let me see there's one where is it oh yeah <laughs> yeah so if you ever wonder like why babies make that like nice squeal that we like think oh those are whistle tones <laughs> it's because of the breath and it's so released you know it's not forced or pushed like there's no tension a lot of times there's tension like in our necks where you see like the vein popping out when you see a singer moving and they're like oh they're working real hard and it's like oh that's because that of that that neck vein yeah that's not a good thing that's tension that we don't want to sing with because over time that's like overworking your vocal cords or even speaking with tension too either one okay so let me get out of here so we want to have you know that sound like the baby we want to be the baby all right so these are the parts of um the your voice box so I like to start with the larynx. The larynx is like when, if you were like going down your trachea, it's right above there, right here, right? And a larynx, what you want when you are speaking or singing is that you want it to be in the lowest position possible. Because when you have a raised larynx, then you don't have enough space for the sound. And that's one of the most important things is having space for the sound. So it's like when you are singing higher, you have to have more space for that sound to um, then like go through your soft palate and hit your hard palate out of your mouth. You know what I mean? So you definitely want. Um, and also, if anybody has any questions, please like let me know and stop me if anything that I'm saying is like you know, something that is confusing or something else, you know, I'm, or if you know something, I'm always down to learn something else because a lot of this stuff is always changing. But anyway, um, your larynx down here, you always want like a low, hold on, I'll open the chat. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we stand. The baby's great, right? fucking cute. Anyway, so the larynx, um, you always want it in a very low place. Um, so that allows space for the sound. Then you have your um, epiglottis, which is like the flaps of um, your vocal cords. Yeah. And then you have your pharynx. Your pharynx is like right above your larynx. Also something that you want to have like as much sound as possible. So you want space. Like all these things, there's talks about space. Your tongue, your tongue is really important because it's kind of how you enunciate all your words is you're using your tongue. But your tongue is tricky because um, it gets in the way. You know, it tends to do more work. It thinks that it's the captain of the ship and it's not. 
the breath is. Um, then we have the palate. So if you just like go through the, the roof of your mouth and just touch it with your tongue, that's your hard palate. So that's where the sound is bouncing off. And then you have your soft palate. So if you like put your tongue a little bit back and just feel that soft part, that's your soft palate. You really want your soft palate to be raised because that also helps with the space for sound. So with your larynx down, right? And then you have your soft palate raised, that should be enough space for sound to be there. Does anybody have any questions about that? Does to start, I must check the chat real fast. Yeah, all right, so these are just, um, this one is just what the vocal folds like look like. It's just another diagram pretty much and like how they open and close, yeah? So it's like this part here, these two flaps, these are the ones that are moving and working when you talk, when you sing, yeah? And then the next one, ah, yeah, so these are my vocal cords. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I go to the ENT uh, ear, ear, nose, and throat doctor about once a year just because I use my voice so much and I'm, like, really cognizant about, like, what happens to them and, I, you know, I just want to know. So they, like, put a camera down my throat and they take pictures of it. So, like, these are my flaps here. There's, like, a little bit of swelling over here. So they're not, like, coming together all the way. And that's just because of just wear and tear. Um, I used to have um, teacher's throat, you know, because teachers are always talking so much and schools don't always have the best environment. Another thing, I'm sorry I'm jumping around, but while we're here and talking about this, uh, um, the air that we breathe isn't great, you know, especially like if it's, especially if you're in New York right now, you know, um, the air quality isn't awesome because there's so much construction happening and then allergies on top of that. Like we have like a lot of male trees that like give a lot of that um, pollen off. So it's just like, um, there, we just take all that in and it just kind of builds up. So to combat that, like using an air purifier or a humidifier, if you can, because the air can be so dry, especially like apartments that you can't, um, the heat, like if you can't control the heat in your apartment, a lot of times and they blast it, all that is dry air, which then affects how you speak and how you sing. So you always want to think about moisturizing your voice as much as possible. Water is really good for that. But we'll talk about more about that in uh, in a little bit. Okay, let's look at these vocal cords and see how they actually look. This is what the human vocal folds look like. This is. Uh, oh, why don't you explain it to me? Uh, this is uh, K-Pentax video stroboscopy okay. in 1080i high definition, and you're seeing this at various rates of us pitch tracking the glottal cycle and representing it in slow motion, but not true slow motion. That would be high speed video, which we have over there. Okay. Well, very cool, folks. If you're wanting to know what the vocal folds look like when you are phonating your phonation package that would be what it looks like yeah how weird is that <laughs> that is so strange but the thing is and that's slow because your vocal cords are moving way faster so if anybody's like if you ever like when people talk about voice parts like oh i'm a soprano or i'm a tenor or i'm an alto what it is based on is how fast your vocal cords move so like for a coloratoral soprano, right? Like that is someone who kind of sounds like a bird, right? So their voice is moving, you know, they're up in here like a piccolo. That means that their vocal cords are moving way, way faster um, in terms like a bass, you know, someone who's down here, their vocal cords uh, move slower. Uh, and that that's what determines your voice type but people don't always talk about that they make it and then there's also trauma around that too when people who aren't really licensed and shouldn't tell you but like oh you're a tenor 
and you're like, wait, what does that, what does that even mean? And then here you are carrying on this label on yourself, which can sometimes be very limiting. I mean, it, it happens a lot to um, a lot of people growing up, like if you sang in the church, you know, and they'll just put you on a part because they need you on that part. It doesn't mean that that's what your voice should be doing. But then on top of that, then you start carrying that label, you know, and some people carry it with pride and some people don't. But that can also add to a lot of the trauma around our voices is what people, you know, want us to be kind of to serve their purposes, not really for you. So that's something to think about. So I say that to say, like, don't let labels of um, what people put on you be the label that you hold on to. Yeah, it is rhythmic. You're absolutely right. Uh huh. Yeah, they did the same thing to me, Michael. They, um, I mean, when I first started, my my first voice teacher um, told me I was a contralto, and a contralto is the lowest uh, voice possible for a a woman or a girl. And I was 13, and I wanted to sound like Whitney Houston. And when she told me that, I was devastated. I was like, so then I'll never sing high. And she was like, no, that's not your voice type. Now, that's not something to tell to a child because my voice was changing. It's just that um, while other people's like higher registers developed first, mine did the opposite. My lower register developed first. So it was just a little bit heavier. And then she just put me as a contralto. And I really held on to that label even throughout college. I was like, I'm not a real soprano. And it's like, but you are singing all these parts. And I'm like, no, I was like holding on to that. So if that's you, let it go. It doesn't matter. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. Okay. The diaphragm. So the diaphragm is uh, here in your body. Duh. Um, but it's kind of like a and people, like, who has heard, oh, sing from your diaphragm or speak from your diaphragm? Yeah, right? Like, it's the thing that everyone says, and it's kind of abstract, you know? Like, I was told that my, your diaphragm is like a, a vinyl record, and it's not. It's more 3D than that. It's like a dome shape, right? And it moves up and down, which allows the amount of air to come into your body. Because, once again, what makes the voice work is your breath right? That's what is supporting the sound. So here's just like how the diaphragm works. The primary muscle of respiration is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a thin dome-shaped layer of muscle and tendon that separates the abdominal cavity from the chest cavity. It gains its shape from its attachments and from the organs that surround it, especially the heart, lungs, and liver. The diaphragm attaches at the costals along the lower rib cage, high in the front at the sternum, and deeply in the back along the spine. The diaphragm also attaches to itself via essential tendon, making the diaphragm one of the unique muscles of the body. The diaphragm uses its central tendon and its attachments as leverage to flatten during inhalation. The expansion of the ribs comes from the resistance of the internal organs to downward movement. As the internal organs are slow to move, the ribs expand to make room for the lungs. While the diaphragm attaches at the bottom of the ribs, its range of motion never reaches that low in the body. As seen from below, we get a sense of the full range of motion of the diaphragm as it would glide over the aorta, the vena cava, the esophagus, and the internal organs. For more information, visit the expansion of the ribs. Yeah, so that's the diaphragm. So I want you to think about it because a lot of times when we breathe, we tend to breathe not even this low. A lot of times our breath is in our chest, you know? So if you right now were to just take a breath, a lot of times it is just up here and we need to breathe so much lower. And what the diaphragm reminds you is that also it's not just in the front, you also have your lungs in the back. Like that's your real support is, is using that much power um, for your breath. That definitely helps you out when you're like doing a lot of long notes because when you're singing just up here or speaking up here and you feel like really out of breath, like I feel a little out of breath right now because I'm just talking. So I have to remind myself, take a deep breath and like a breath where you can feel it not just in your front, but also in your back. You know, it's kind of like your, your ancestors have in your back. That's what you want to do.
So the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to try a breathing exercise. Oh, I put another baby. <laughs> I forgot. Woo, I really enjoy. But I'm just saying, like, okay, check this out. Yeah. See that breath? we get the idea why can a baby do that well because the baby is breathing so low you know it's like when you do yoga it's that yoga breath where it like takes over your whole body that's why a baby can scream for two hours and it's annoying as hell but it's because they're in control of our bodies over time we get older you know we get a little bit more stressed i feel like the older you get the more stressed you are the less you breathe low all of a sudden your breath gets higher and higher and higher. And then it's just in your chest. And if you were to sing, and if you were gonna go through a whole phrase and you take that shallow of a breath, you are dead in the water. You can't vocally negotiate that way. You know, you really wanna use a nice deep breath to help start the pattern of circular breathing, which is what a lot of singers do. Cause that is like voice control. So the way to start working on this is there are a few exercises that I really like to do. Um, and, um, and a lot of them also help with anxiety, which is, I think, what we're all going through at the present time. So I want, um, I want everyone to try this one. This one is called um, Breath Squared. And how it works is um, you take a deep breath in for four. So you count one, two, three, four. You hold for four. Hold that breath that you've taken in. You release for four. One, two, three, four. And you hold for four. So I will prompt you, but I would love for you to just take a moment, close your eyes, and just kind of get with the breath right now. All right, we'll begin. So I just want you to close your eyes and just focus on the breath right now, just what it's doing in your body. If you feel like your breath is kind of high, that's okay. We're just like taking stock of what's happening. And let's just start this breathing, ready? So it is uh, take a deep breath in for four. One, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Release, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Okay, how is that for everyone? Pretty good? Try it again. So let's do it one more time, and then I want you to do it one more time by yourself. And this just kind of reminds you of where your breath is in your body. So take a deep breath in for four. One, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Release, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four, and then try once by yourself. Great. Yeah, does anybody observe anything with their breath just doing that one exercise? Feel free to. Yeah, my body completely relaxed. Yeah. It doesn't happen often, so. So that's, that's a really great exercise to do. Anyone else? I feel like my breath kind of got trapped, like, right here, even though I was, I felt it down below, too. Mm. Like, yeah. it was feeling a little tight. Yeah, that just means that your body's extra tight. That's yeah. the, it. I yeah. think. I, I was able to stop here. I'm sorry, two people were talking at once. Tell me one. Oh. Who's the other person? They want to go first? Yeah, let me see. I'll I'll stop sharing the screen for a second so I can see everyone's faces. Okay. Who was just talking? I I I was talking, but um okay. yeah. I was I was just gonna say that I feel like I felt 
um, the breath more in my stomach this time, mm. um, which was nice. So. Yeah. Yeah. Breathing low. You always want to think I, what, um, what helps me a lot because uh, singers, we tend to use a lot of um, imagery. I, think of, um, I have mouths on my knees and that's how low I need to breathe to to <laughs> so it's like little little mouths on my knees that are like they're taking the deep breath in which is making my uh my breath as low as possible you know and also you want to think about like the breath surrounding you too which is really good all right there are a couple more exercises i'll share my screen again um that we can do all right so empty to full one is really great because it's like that you get that whole mechanism of how the breath moves in your body. So what you do is you want to empty out um, the breath in your body that you have. So it's like <sighs> empty it all out and empty, 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 right? Until you feel like you can't anymore. And then you take a deep breath in. And you can kind of feel like your whole body expands. Like when I teach little kids, oops, I always talk about uh, you want to be as big as a balloon coming through the door. So that's a really good one to do, to focus on. And then the last one is four, three, seven. So um, what you want to do is you here, and I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll show you all. Okay. Yeah, you got mouths on your knees. So what you want to do is um, you want to take a, a deep breath in for four, right? One, two, three, four. You hold for three. One, two, three. And then you release on a for seven. And the reason why you do that is that you want to start now implicating that practice of vocal control. Because it's not enough now that we're like, you know, releasing taking a breath and releasing it. But now it's like, well, how do I control it? And the s and keeping it constant for seven really shows you that. For example, if you're like s moving too much air, then that means that like you're, you're not controlling the air that is coming in and out. And that's helping you get through a phrase of a song, a phrase, a thought, you know, that, that definitely helps. Any questions? On that, we can keep going. I have a question. Like on the on the first one and on the third one, I almost feel like, like for example, on that last one we just did, if I do this, I feel like I don't get all my breath out all the way. You shouldn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, you shouldn't. Because what that is, it's like when you are singing, you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, like use all the breath at once. Because what you want to do is, if I'm singing a phrase, you know, I'm like, <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, you need to sing out. But like, if I, if I were to sing that phrase, you know, the reason why it's smooth is because I'm not using all my air because that's not the, you know, you're going to, if you're going through a song, you don't want to use everything because then you would have to fill up again. And depending on the timing, you may not have time to do that. You know, so you don't want to think about going um, all the way. It's just like, just that constant. So it's good that you didn't get through all your breath. You shouldn't. Got you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Let's see. All right. Next slide. All right. So these are the four areas of vocal production. Um, your vocal folds, they vibrate, which is good. You know, they, we saw that in the, in the video, how they're like moving back and forth together. Um, your resonators, so that's like your larynx and your pharynx, those help with the resonation. Um, articulators, which is the tongue and the lips. So that's why like, we're gonna do something in a little bit to relax the tongue, relax the lips. Um, and so that when, they're, when you're singing from a place of relaxation, that's, a, that's the kind of the best sound that you're gonna get is singing from a place of relaxation. 
you know? Um, and then you have your breath. The breath is the power source. That is what's happening. So if you rely on your breath more than like kind of weird things that, you know, our bodies do, that's when you're going to get the clearest amount of sound. It's through the breath. Okay, so like I was saying before, you have six areas of relaxation. It's uh, this guy, he wrote a book. It's all the McCloskey method. Um, he goes into a lot of like voice and speech stuff, which I don't particularly like to do because sometimes it's like correcting the voice. And I know that's definitely from like a whitewashed standpoint. So I kind of skip those parts of the book. But what he talks about is that, like I said before, the voice is, should always be used from a relaxed place. So how you do that is like there's, we tend to hold weird tension um, in places in our bodies. Um, and a lot of that is like in the muscles in our face, you know, from talking a lot. And your tongue, your tongue can do some like weird stuff when you're singing, it moves so much. And what it needs to be is in a place of rest um, in your mouth. I don't like to say flat because sometimes then you like push it down to be flat and then you can end up, um, here, I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll show y'all. So sometimes they'll be like, oh, you know, make your tongue flat. So then you put it down and then you have all this tension under your tongue, like in this ridge here. And we want that to be squishy. We don't want it to be filled with tension, right? And then, you know, your jaw, all this, and then in, even in your throat. So what we're going to do is I just want you to take your hands and I want you to massage starting with your forehead and your temples, all this, because we want this to be as relaxed as possible. These are also points of resonation. Like when I'm singing high, I don't feel it in my throat. I feel it in my forehead. That's how I know that it just like, it feels like it's vibrating out of my head. So that's how I know that I am in the right place. That's how I know that the air is taking over, right? So we're gonna just like take a moment and also, when you're doing this, focus on your breathing, too. You know, you kind of have to tend to do two things at once. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Technology is so great. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, then go for your temples. Also, in here, your sinus cavities, definitely. You want to rub that. So, it's like when when we're singing and we're mixing, meaning we're taking the lower register and the higher register and they come together, that's like the mixed voice. This is kind of where the mixed voice lives in here. Yeah. Then come on down. I have my headphones on, so I can't like really rub my jaw. Yeah, so it's like if you can get like in your jaw hinge in here. Yeah, you wanna just like massage that and rub that yeah in here and you want to like lightly release your jaw you know just lightly I don't really know very much about TMJ when it's like very like when your jaw locks but you just want to just like lightly and like if it if your jaw like kind of like clicks a little bit that's okay my jaw does that all the time and that's all right so just like lightly Lightly touch that under here, you know, because here's the thing, your voice is an instrument, right? But it's different than like a piano because it doesn't matter, you know, how I feel, the piano doesn't change, but how you feel makes a difference on your voice. Like when I get my period, my voice, I sing flat, just, just enough to piss me off. So that means I just got to like work a little bit harder because that changes in your body, yeah? So you want to do here, um, swallow. Your vocal cords need moisture, you know? So swallowing before you speak. Sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we forget to breathe before we speak, right? Swallowing is very good because it's kind of like re-moisturizing your cords, yeah? And getting in here, getting in your lymph nodes, 
So these are definitely things that you can do as like a warm up for your voice, especially like if you're doing a lot of Zoom calls or if you're doing a lot of talking and everything. This is like a five minute thing that you can do and focus on those breathing, like between this and the breathing, just to get you started and drinking a good fair amount of water will definitely help you in like your voice journey to start doing that. Anybody have any questions? Okay, thoughts, feelings. All right, well, if you do, let me know. Okay. All right, yeah, so we've all did this, all the swallowing muscles, muscles in your face, the tongue. These are things that you just really wanna relax because your voice always sounds better from a relaxed place. All right, so phonation is the production of sound. Um, so because we worked on the areas of relaxation with like our, uh, oh, our tongue, I fucked up. Okay, here's the thing about your tongue. Your tongue's a little bit of a bitch. And I'm not just saying that because like, you know, like my tongue's a bitch too, it gets in the way, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna do these tongue rolls. And they look like this. Rolling your tongue until uh, it kind of like, you're like, ow, why does it hurt? It's, you have to tire it down. Because sometimes when we sing, you know, and you're like holding out a note, our tongues tend to like, be like, well, it's time for me to, you know, I'm the star of the show. So your tongue will start making you like, like your tongue will like move back, move forward, it like quivers stuff like that. So you want to roll your tongue. So roll it one way, all right, all the way around, and then roll it the other way. Uh-huh. Roll it again the other way. Like, let's work this tongue all the way out. Mm-hmm. And then roll it the other way. Yeah. And I tend to do it until my tongue like feels very tired and I know that it's like not going to move. Um, another uh, exercise that I like to do is dog pants. I'm not trying not to like do it too much into the mic, but what you want to do. So it's like if I were to take out my tongue and I like to do it in the mirror just to look at like what my tongue looks like. So it's like, <sighs> and what you're doing is if you do that and you notice that your tongue is moving, that means that your tongue is still in control. So you want to breathe over it like you're a dog in heat. <sighs> yeah. And then you're also working that, that sphincter muscle with, under your diaphragm, under your ribs, you know? So it's like you want that tongue to not move back and forth. You want it to definitely stay in one place. And what's moving is the air over it. And then you could do it fast. You could do it slow. It's a really great workout for your tongue because the tongue is really, really important. It can really affect the sound. Even like how you sing, how you enunciate vowels when you sing, all that stuff. And we want open vowels as much as possible. All right, let's see. Okay, all right, so some exercises for phonation and um, uh, to do is, um, singers like to do slides. I tend to do slides because it lets me know like what my voice is doing or how it feels for the day. So what is a slide? A slide is literally like this thing here, but it's like what, what you want your voice to kind of go up and down. So if I were to do a slide, I don't really do it with a piano. I just do it with the breath. So it's just, ah, 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 ah. Doing those kind of stuff. And I would say when you're starting to do it, do it with more air than sound because the breath is what's warming up the sound. So it's ah, ah, ah. Use as much breath as possible. You know, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, and you could do ha ma 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 You just want to try and get through all the nooks and crannies of what your voice is doing. Yeah. Okay, what happened? 
Anyway, I'll stop sharing my screen for a second so we can start. So it's just like, you know, ah, can you try that for me? Just a, ah, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Can I, can I pick on someone to just like try it for everyone to hear? Anybody wants to volunteer? <laughs> Anyone? It's just a slide. I'm gonna make you do some other things too, so don't worry. I'm with it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Can I hear your slides, please? Okay. <sighs> nice. Ah. Ah. Can you add more air to the sound? Ah. Nice, yeah. Ah. Yeah, hold on one second. That was great. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. I need the charger for the laptop. Because the battery's about to die. Ugh. Sorry, I had to ask for the charger for the laptop because I don't want it to die on us. That would really suck. Um, but no, that was really good because the more air you're using, it's definitely like relaxing. Um, it's like we don't want tension, you know, because it's normally like the first thing that you're doing. It's um, when you are uh, practicing. Just plug in my laptop. I think about it like you're starting a car, you know, if you're in a cold place and you have an old car, you can't just get in and drive it, right? Or else you like fuck up the, tra the transmission. So what you want to do is you want to warm it up. And that's a good way to do it is doing those slides. So once you've done that, you know, so we've done a couple of slides. Ah, ah, you can add um, sound to it. So if I were to do a slide, um, I'll go down here. So I'm just doing an octave, right? So you can add that to it too, where if you wanna sing, you can just add that. That's my starting note. Very, very light. You know, this is not something where you have to add a lot of, um, um, where you want to add a lot of sound. Because remember, we're starting to warm up. You know, we're trying to be as kind to our voices as possible. So that means like really being ginger with them and, and compassionate to them, especially when you're first warming up and you're not used to doing it. Like, please be compassionate and kind to your voice. You know, if you're not used to it, like take your time because it's, it takes time. Like I've been taking voice lessons, I don't know, since I was 12 um, and I'm about 32 now. So I've been taking it for a long ass time. And it, what I've learned is like, it, this, this is something that needs to be consistent for it to work. Because if it's not consistent, then you can't expect, you know, your voice to like know what it's doing. You're now kind of rewiring and changing its, its muscle memory. You know, it's now, oh, I need to breathe deeper than I have been doing, but my body's not used to it. It's just a, a training that voice, yeah? So if you wanna try a couple um, on your own, I'm starting on, um, on a G, if that matters to anybody. So it's a low G. Uh, very, very gingerly, yeah? Uh, let me go up the scale. Uh, good. Uh, like I can tell from that, my voice is a little tired. I sang last night. You know, I've been talking and like screaming in my phone, so and haven't been drinking enough water, so I need to do that. Yeah, and then I'll just do one more. Ah, 
So a few slides just to see like what your voice is doing is really good. Um, but before I even would do that, because um, uh, ah is a, a really wide vowel. And that can be hard when we're just singing to start with a, such a wide vowel because our vocal cords are like moving in a wide space. We want to start with like a closed vowel. And my favorite vowel to start with is a me, yeah, an E vowel. Singers love vowels. Vowel, I think, is like our roadmap through a song. You know, you can just go through the vowels of a song and just sing a song on vowels. I kind of, I tend to do that. And like, you know, you sound crazy, but it's just like a nice open sound. And that's what we want. It's just open sound. So if I were to do, um, so if I start on me. Yeah. So if it would just be like, um, so you would say me. I like the M because it vibrates on your lips. Mm, me. Can you just do that? Mm, me. Yeah, when you feel that vibration, that's where you want your sound to always come from is vibration. So if we were here, we are on an A, if, if anybody cares. Um, so it's mm, mm, me. And then I start with just a me. Can I have someone try that? Let's warm up a little bit. Who wants to try those me's? I can get a few people. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay, now? <laughs> yeah, so I'll give you the note, right? So first say it. Just go, mmm. Just feel that. Mm. Yeah, good. And then say, me. Me. Good. And then you're going to go, me. And then you're going to sing it. So it's three parts. So you say, so you, mmm, first, right? You say it, mm, because now you're not incorporating the mm with it. Mm, me. And then you just sing the note. Me. Mm, me. Me. It's good. Can you do a couple for me? So, mm. Mm, me. Me. Try it again. Me. Me. So, mm, me. 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 Yes. Again. Mm, me. 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 Good. Two more. And now the higher you go, we remember we were talking about like making space for sound. Mm -hmm. That definitely helps with the space for sound is that the higher you go, you want to make more space for that eval. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, in this, and this is like our talking range mm -hmm. in here. So now the higher you go. So for up here, you wouldn't just do a small me. You would make a little bit more space for that me. So uh The higher I go, it's not like small, you know? And you also want to think long and not wide. Okay. When you're singing, yeah? Yeah. Thank you for trying. Anybody else want to give it a go? Anybody else want to give it a go? I can try. Yeah. All right. I'll start back on A. Okay. That's, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Mm, so, mm, me, me, mm, me, me, good. Mm, me, me, mm, me, me. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about that vibration on your lips. Mm. Feel that. That resonance. Mm, me. Yeah. Me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's much better. It just um kind of relaxes the spout the sound and it's like you're tasting it. 
You know, someone talked about like tasting their words. This is definitely the way to do it. Like when I teach little kids and they're like, mm, me, I'm like, think about your favorite food. I'm like, what is it? And they're like, pizza. And I'm like, Great. <laughs> you're eating pizza and they're like mm-hmm. and I'm like yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> <It's your> favorite food <laughs> all right uh, do a couple more for me at your note mm, me mm, me good last one mm, me Yeah, you're a little bit higher, but that's it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, that's good. That's good. I'm also feeling it here too, which is what I get excited about. It's like the, um, the vibrations. I just really enjoy vibrations of sound. Yeah, because it makes you feel uh, tingly. It should. It feels like a massage, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you can't get in there and like, you know, use your hands. Like... <laughs> And like more power to you but that's kind of weird you know so it's like you want to use that mm, mm, that mm vowel is that's like a nice massage for your vocal cords and your throat and then you're taking that that vibration and that's what you're using to propel your sound you know you always want to be in the presence of vibration you know because if you don't have vibration then your sound is flat right there's also another thing that that used to help me that still helps me is because I have like a I don't know if you call it an overactive tongue but like a tongue that like really wants to jump in there mm. so I do this thing that is from link later work where I put my tongue out like this so that I let go of my tongue being engaged so that I can also hear the vibrations but I know it's like link later does work more with speaking voices but I'm sh- I mean, that's stuff that you can carry over for singing, but that's sometimes what I do because my tongue is like always trying to hop in there and get in. So also your tongue is super long, you know, and yeah. it's really long. It's like goes all the way down, you know? So that's why like if anybody were have a seizure, you know, God forbid, and like we put them on their side because they could literally choke on their tongue. Cause it's, it's so long. It's such a crazy muscle, but that's good. You do want to release that that in the back and your singing voice and your speaking voice are one and the same they really are that's why a lot of spe- uh, singers like if they're really tired it could be just how they use their normal speaking voice you know that's why teachers who don't sing tend to have some of the worst voice issues because they're talking so much you know and the and it's like you kind of want to talk in the range of your voice so for a lot of people it's like like in here you know, so you always, so not only do you want to speak where the vibration is, but you want, um, not only do you want to sing where the vibration is, you want to speak where that vibration is in your body too. And like I said, everyone is different, but like once you know where that place is, that's where you want to live because that's what feels the best for your voice and for your body. Yeah. Thank you for trying. Uh, one last person. Anybody? Anybody? Don't make me have to pick. I'll try just because I'm super shy. Yay! I want to try to do. I just want to try, but I might do it wrong. No, it's okay. (laughs) I'm just trying, trying. I'd rather you be strong and wrong than, you know, not. (laughs) So give it a shot. I'll give you the note. So you're doing, um, Mmm, me, me. Really easy, really simple. Mmm, me, me. That's it. Can you go a little higher for me? So, mmm, me, me. Mmm, me, me. Nice. And I want you to focus on that E vowel. You know, because that's really, that's really where the money is, yeah? Mmm, me, me. Mmm, me, me. Good. And uh, one more. Mmm, me, me. Try it. Mmm, me, me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So these are different things. Like I just went from, you know, like an A to a C, but you can, you can go up to another A, like it doesn't matter. But it's just literally like, just trying to figure out like where your voice is because all our voices, even when you're speaking, it's musical, you know, like there's some, there's some musicality to it. So I don't want you to ever lose that, you know, and I think that definitely helps. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did I do the notes right or did I do them wrong? No, the, your notes were right. Okay, cool. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, ear training is another thing that, um, like, if you really, like, want to get into singing, I think the best way to do that is to train your ear, um, and a way you can do that is if you, if you have, a, like, an iPhone, or I guess Android, too, right, you can download a piano app, and you can kind of test yourself, just, like, pluck a note and sing it, and think, like, you know, and, and really just start focusing on, like, am I higher than the note, am I lower than the note, how can I sound just like the note? You know, what, what, what can I do to sound like the note? And you kind of just want to train your ear to hear, to hear the notes. And this is not for like perfect pitch or anything. Cause I don't, I don't have perfect pitch. I have relative pitch. Um, uh, so it's like, if it's some songs are muscle memory for me. So it's like, if I sing a song enough and I know what key it's in, then I can always sing it in that key, even without a piano. But that's just, that's just memory, muscle memory. It's kind of like when you go to the gym, you know, and you're working out, it's just like your muscles know what it's, what it's doing. And that's because you've trained it so long. So to really get that started is to just, I would say, download a piano app and just start plucking around. And seeing if you sound like the note, you know, if you're close to it, too, is really, really helpful. Yeah. All right. Let's see. What time is it? I've just been talking for so... Oh, my God. I've been talking for so long, y'all. My bad. You're good, though. I think it's called a Leo or something. I love you. I'm it's still here. just like a... Cl oh. <laughs> Whoa. I've just been going on and on, and y'all ain't even stopped me. Oh, my God. We've loved it. It's great. It's been great. You're amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess uh, what I'll talk about now is just like some like vocal health stuff, which is really important. Um, taking care of your voice because you don't want your voice to go away, you know. And it's hard because we're humans and a lot of shit is happening. So like, you know, if you, if you've been drinking wine, like I've been drinking wine, like that's okay. You know, I just like, whatever you're doing, I would say combat it with water. Water is so important. Drink as much water as possible. Um, because also that helps with infection. It helps with any kind of like water is life. And that's why, you know, people are fucking with water because it is so important. I guarantee you, like in my brain, I'm like, yo, World War III would be over water, water and air. I wouldn't be surprised because water is so important. So while we do have it, please, please drink it, right? Um, I tend to uh, have acid reflux, which sucks. And that's another thing that um, can really fuck up, fuck with your voice, you know? If you have a lot of like uh, acidity in your uh, diet, it fucks with your pH balance and then it does fuck with your voice. Like if you have heartburn and stuff. So things that um, could help that like if you drink a lot of coffee, if you have hot sauce, alcohol can do that. You know, if you smoke, that does that too. That adds to it. So what I want to say is like, I'm not, I'm like no saint, you know, like I love hot sauce i am west indian so we just I, I put hot sauce in literally everything <laughs> you know coffee like if i need to like wake up um but what it does it tends to dry you out so then what happens is when your vocal cords are all dried out and you go to sing or to speak they rub together and we don't want them to rub together because that's literally like starting a fire in your throat right? We want them to really come together gently and nicely um, when we are, uh, when we're phonating, when we're speaking, singing, talking, you know, all that stuff. So water is really, really good for that. Um, um, if you sleep, 
sleep is so important. And I know right now that's like, <laughs> who's sleeping? Um, but if you can get a good amount of rest, like that would be really helpful because that's how your voice rests. And um, going back to water, one of my, my voice teacher was like, you know, you should drink more water because when, uh, when you are like using that water, it takes up to four hours for your vocal cords to get that hydration. So it's like, not even like if you just drink water now, you probably won't feel it until later on today, you know, because that takes so much time. So just adding enough water to your diet will be really great. Also, there are a lot of good fruits that have a lot of moisture in them. So like green apples are really, really good because that has a lot of moisture in it. Pineapple is good too, you know, some things like they don't always go like hand in hand because it's like I like lemons. I'm a big lemon person, right? I do lemon and honey all the time. But then the acidity does fuck with the acid reflux. So it's just trying to find the balance between the two. But you know your body better than anyone else. So it's just something for you to focus on. Mostly is just like, what can I do? Also, another thing is um, if you need uh, like... I like we like I was saying like for New York, you know, I'm in New York um, and I don't, I'm not sure if everyone is in New York or like where people are exactly. But um, the we tend to have like a, a, the air is not great. Like I said, the air quality is kind of awful and it could be very uh, dry. However, not as dry as Santa Fe where I was. And that was insane. But um, what I like to do is if you have a humidifier, definitely use it. Um, a cool air humidif humidifier is great for the summer. Warm air humidifier, if you have it in the winter, just clean it more because it can tend to get more bacteria. If you have neither of those and are like, you know, low on cash, they're just totally fine. Take a pot of boiling hot water put a towel over your head, right? Like turn it off, like please don't set your house on fire. And, um, and then breathe in that, that warm air. It's also good if you're sick, right? It's good to get the cold out of your chest or in your head. Like if you have a sinus infection or any kind of head cold, what it is, it's like a buildup of mucus. So we want to release that pressure and that mucus. And that definitely helps that. If you also take a shower, if you just steam your shower and sit in there and extra points, if you have some sort of like eucalyptus oil or Vicks, and you just like kind of put that under your nose, that's something really great to do to, um, to uh, get rid of a lot of like any kind of extra mucus or phlegm that's going around like that, that will definitely help. Yeah. Oh, there's more. Yeah, so that yeah, for Coronavirus too, it's like, you know, you want to just like get rid of a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So I feel like I've <laughs> talked y'all's ear off about singing. Um, once again, I'm Alithia. I sing. I'm so happy that y'all have been here. Um, if you have any questions or any thoughts or concerns, please feel free to like hit me up. Um, I'm on IG at Miss Olivia. M-I-S-S-O-L-I-T-H-E-A. I also teach uh, voice lessons. Um, so I know it's hard because it's like we are apart, but I've been doing it online for a little while and I think I got a good hand on it. Like it's not bad. So please hit me up if you want to like do some voice stuff um, and take care of yourselves. You know, it's really crazy out there. Take care of yourselves, drink a lot of water. And yeah. I think that's it. It's just like a brief overview. <laughs> but yeah. Thank y'all so much. This was really fun. Thank you. You did that. Thank you, Olivia. Yeah. We you love you. So Olivia, we appreciate Great. you. Thank you so much. You are a shining light of golden energy and <laughs> musical sound. Oh. <laughs> I will right. definitely be hitting you up. Yay. Definitely. definitely. Yes. Slide in her DMs. Yeah. <laughs>
DMs. Let's like sing together. You know what I mean? It's hard because we didn't have enough time to do it with us all. But, you know, this is just an overview. Mm-hmm. More. It was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you all so much for being here. Hopefully we will catch you again. More offerings. All the things. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Together we can. Yes. Thank you, Bufu. Thank you, Lutia. Yeah, no problem. Bye. 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 Bye.